friends so now we are going to start with another problem here we are going to find the nth derivative of the given function with the help of the de moivre's theorem now guys you must be shocked that why do we use de moivre's theorem so here you will learn when do we use de moivre's theorem to find out the nth derivative of given function so let's start <music> So guys here the given function is 1 upon x square plus a square and we have to prove that yn is this given value. Now how to get the nth derivative. So first of all let's observe the given function y. So it is 1 upon x square plus a square it means it is an algebraic function. So whenever we have algebraic function we use rules of algebraic function to find out the nth derivative. Now guys. Here on your screen you can see some formulae. So first two formulae are to find out the nth derivative of algebraic function. So if I want to apply any of this formula then I have to bring that x square plus a square from quadratic nature to the linear form so that I can apply the formula. So guys to bring it in the linear form here I will divide this x square plus a square into two brackets. So let's see how. So here I'll say y equal to 1 upon now this x square plus a square i'll rewrite as x plus ai in first bracket and x minus ai in the second bracket now guys here if you apply the formula of a square minus b square then by that you will get x square minus a square i square now i square is minus 1 and that is why you will get plus a square so this is the formula for 1 upon x square plus a square. Now again to find out the nth derivative I have to separate these two terms. So to separate two linear terms we generally use the partial fraction. So as here we can separate these terms by using the partial fraction. But if you want to save your time then I will tell you one more method to find out the partial fraction which is a shortcut method. So by that you can again get the partial fraction of given function. So guys that is the method of trial and error. So what I'll do is I will directly find out the partial fraction of this function so that I'll save my time and I can use that time to solve the further steps of the given sum. So guys, here we'll say this y is nothing but. So what I'll do is I will rewrite these two terms as 1 upon x minus ai minus 1 upon x plus ai. Now guys, if I want this answer, then we will cross multiply here, we will take the LCM. So by cross multiplication in the denominator, we will get this term. Let's see what we get in numerator. So here we will get, here I'll show you in the rough. So we'll get x plus ai into 1 that is x plus ai. And this is minus 1 into x minus ai is minus x plus ai. And in the denominator, we will get these two brackets. Now guys, x and x cancel. So we will get 2ai in the numerator and in the denominator, we will get two brackets. Now what we want? So in the numerator, we want one. In the denominator, we want two brackets. So we got these two brackets in denominator, but we did not get one in the numerator. And guys, to get that one, what I will do is, I will multiply this term by one upon 2ai. So this ai plus ai 2a and 2a will be cancelled and I will get 1 again. So guys it means here we got the partial fraction of this given function. So by this you can save your time and still if you want to perform the partial fraction then let me tell you that you will get the same answer as your final answer. So guys next we will find out the nth derivative of these two functions because now these two functions are in the form of ax plus b that is 1 upon ax plus b so tell me what is the n derivative of 1 upon x plus b because i've already covered the n derivative of algebraic function in the previous videos and i'm sure that you are watching my all the videos and revising all the formulae so guys by using that formula here i'll say nth derivative will be 1 upon 2 ai in bracket we will get minus 1 to the power n then n factorial 
into a raised to n. Now a is nothing but the coefficient of x. Here I'll show you the formula. It is minus 1 raised to n n factorial a raised to n which is coefficient of x and here ax plus b raised to n plus 1. Now coefficient of x is 1. So 1 raised to n will be 1. I'll not write that term and in the denominator we will get x minus ai raised to n plus 1. Next middle sign minus here we will get minus 1 raised to n into n factorial upon x plus ai raised to n plus 1. So guys this is the nth derivative of this given function y. But you, if you observe the answer then that is not correct because in the answer we want sine term. And guys here if you observe then we did not get any trigonometric term. Now the question is how to bring the trigonometric term. So guys for that reason I am going to teach you new concept which is called as a concept of De Moivre's theorem which we have already learned in the complex number chapter. So guys here can you observe that we have a complex number in the denominator that is x plus ai and x minus ai and let's say if I convert that complex number into polar form then we can get cos and sine in that and again if I apply the De Moivre's theorem and again if I apply the De Moivre's theorem then we can get this sign term in the answer. Now let's see how to do that. So as I was saying that we will convert this number into polar form. So we know that in complex number the real part of a polar form is r cos theta and the imaginary part of a polar form is r sin theta. So here I'll show you that we generally say z is equal to r into cos theta plus i sin theta in complex number where z is a complex number. So it means the real part is r cos theta and the imaginary part is r sin theta. So guys same concept I'll use here. So since I can see that your real part is x and imaginary part is ai we will call this or we will assume this x as r cos theta and ai as r sin theta and then we'll solve it further. So here I'll say let x equal to r cos theta then this a is equal to r sin theta. Now guys I am not considering i because i is the imaginary term which is always present in any complex number. So that r sin theta is my a. So by considering this if I ask you what is the value of r then what we will do is we will just square and add it. So r will become under root x square plus a square. Similarly if I ask you what is the value of theta then we will divide this two terms. So sin theta upon cos theta will be tan theta and here we will get a upon x. It means we will say that value of theta is tan inverse of a by x. Now guys since we have assumed the value for x and a we will put these two values here so here we have 1 upon x minus ai raised to n plus 1 so guys that will become 1 upon x is r cos theta minus i a is r sin theta whole bracket raised to n plus 1 so I can take r common so that will become 1 upon r raised to n plus 1 and here we will get 1 upon cos theta minus i sin theta whole raised to n plus 1. Now guys to get value of this term here I am going to use again one of the most beautiful theorem called as de Moivre's theorem. So by that what we do is we take this power inside and we multiply the angle. So here we will get cos of n plus 1 theta and here I will get sine of n plus 1 theta. So
So guys, here I have applied the demo over serum. So in exam, it is mandatory to mention the name. So here you have to say by demo over serum. Now, here what I'll do is I will take this complex number in the numerator, and to take that, I will use one property of complex number. Or you can assume that if I multiply this numerator and denominator with the complex conjugate of this cos minus i sine then we will get in the numerator cos plus i sine in the denominator we will get cos minus i sine into cos plus i sine which is cos square theta plus sine square theta which is 1 so in the denominator we will get 1 and in numerator we will get the positive sign so here we will say that 1 upon x minus a i raised to n plus 1 will become 1 upon r raised to n plus 1 and here cos of n plus 1 theta plus i sine n plus 1 theta. So guys, this will be the value. Now, here we got the first value. Next, I'll find out a second value that is value of 1 upon x plus a i raised to n plus 1. So here I'll say similarly, the value of 1 upon x plus a i raised to n plus 1 equal to. Now guys, since all terms are same, only the sign is different, we'll get the same answer with the opposite sign. So here we will get 1 upon r raised to n plus 1 and here we will get cos of n plus 1 theta minus i sin n plus 1 theta. So you can observe that I have changed the sign. So I got two values. So what we are going to do is we are going to substitute these two values in this equation. So before substituting let's take this minus 1 raised to n into n factorial outside from both the terms. So we will get y n as minus 1 raised to n into n factorial upon 2ai and then in the bracket we have 1 upon x minus ai raised to n plus 1 minus 1 upon x plus ai raised to n plus 1. It means guys we have to subtract these two values. So if I subtract these two values because these are the substitutions for these two values. So if I subtract this, so minus 1 raised to n, n factorial upon 2ai will remain same and by subtraction we will get 1 upon r raised to n plus 1 common and by subtracting these two values cos will become negative, cos and cos will be cancelled, this will become positive and you will get 2i sine of n plus 1 theta. Now guys we will cancel 2i with this 2i and now let's observe the answer. So we got minus 1 raised to n into n factorial and sine raised sine of n plus 1 theta you can see here we got these three terms but we did not get this sine of n plus 1 theta and a raised to n plus 2 term. Now the question is how to bring this. So guys, here in the denominator we have a, so I am not going to touch this a because I want a in the denominator, but I don't want this r raised to n plus 1 term in the denominator. So guys, for that, in the previous screen, we have assumed that value of a is equal to r sin theta. So if I ask you what is value of r, then you will say it is a upon sin theta. And guys, I am going to use this value over here. The reason is, if you observe the final answer, then in the final answer, I want sine raised to n plus 1 theta term. And that term I can get if I substitute value of r as a upon sine theta. So, here we will get y n as minus 1 raised to n into n factorial upon a into sine of n plus 1 theta upon here a upon sine theta whole raised to n plus 1. So guys, this will become a raised to n plus 1 into a that is a raised to n plus 2. So here I will say minus 1 raised to n into n factorial 
upon a raised to n plus 2 then this n plus 1 will go here in the power we will get sin raised to n plus 1 theta which will go in the numerator so we will get sin raised to n plus 1 theta and this term as it is which is sin of n plus 1 theta as it is and guys if you observe this question then we have proved the given result so here we got the answer and guys here we have used the concept of de Moivre's theorem from the complex number to get this answer so i'm sure you understood this method so guys keep watching the videos because in the coming videos i am gonna cover more numericals on engineering mathematics and also don't forget to share this channel with your friends because they can also get benefited through this lectures of engineering mathematics and other subjects of mathematics so taking leave keep watching videos thank you very much